friends, in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I greet you with Christ's joy. In a moment, we're going to be going to the message. But before we do, I can I ask you a question. Are you letting the giant of guilt beat you up again? Or you remember your new year resolution and that you're going to start eating fresh fruit and cottage cheese? And you did very well uh, uh, up to the end of January. And, and up until you, you pick up that half a gallon uh, ice cream. And now, and now you're falling, and now you're falling off the wagon. Well, or you remember you swore never to do that thing again. And you said to God, I'll never do it again. But now the giant of guilt is taking hold of you. Well, I'm glad you're watching this message this morning as we continue our on in the Life of David series that we've called, Guess Who's Coming to Town? Giant Slayers. In today's message, you're going to learn how to cancel your guilt trip. In a moment, we're going to go right into the world, and I'm encouraging you, get a friend, grab a pen or paper, and let's dig into the world. More importantly, let the world get into you. Second Samuel chapter 12, beginning verse 1. Watch this, and I'll be back. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand with me for the reading of the Word of God. As we continue in our message series on the life of David, called, Guess Who is Coming to Town? Can somebody tell me who is coming to town? Oh, oh, where are my giant slayers in the house this morning? Wait, 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 Second Samuel chapter 12. Oh, as a matter of fact, give me, let's pick it up from Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 20, 37. Verse 27, yes, verse 27. Let's pick up the story from there to set it in context from where we left off last week. But the thing that David had done. The thing that David had done was evil in the sight of the Lord. The thing that David had done was evil in the sight of the Lord. Chapter 12 verse 1. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and he came to him and said there was a man two, two men in one city the one rich and the other poor the rich man had a great many flocks and herds but the poor man had nothing except one ewe lamb which he bought and nourished and it grew up together with him and his children he was like a house pet it will eat of his bread and drink of his cup and lie in his bosom even even slept in bed with him and was like a daughter to him this you lamb now a traveler came to the rich man and he was unwilling to take from his own flock of his own herd to prepare for the warfare who had come to him rather he took the poor man's ewe lamb in other words he slaughtered the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him then David's anger burned greatly against the man and he said to Nathan as the Lord lived surely the man who has done this deserves to die isn't it funny how we're quick to cast judgment isn't it quick isn't it funny how 
they were quick to cast a stone and we point finger but this is pointing back David was quick to condemn <laughs> you, you know the story not knowing where the axe will fall And David said, verse, he must, verse 6, he must make restitution for the land for fold because he did this thing and had not compassion. Verse 7, Nathan then said to David, you, Just condemned jump because of time jump to verse 13 then David said to Nathan I have sinned against the Lord of the Lord Father the flower fades and the grass withers but your word even if heaven and earth shall pass away your word remain abide and abideth forever now break the word to us. Holy Spirit, speak through me. Hide me beneath the cross. Speak to every heart that is wearied and heavy this morning. As we've been singing, said the captives free. Loose chains. And you receive all the glory this morning. For we ask this in the most precious name of the one who loved us and died for us. Jesus the Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Before you take your seat, before you take your seat, I've titled the message this morning, Cancel Your Guilt Trip. Cancel your guilt trip uh, ju ju just greet the person next to you greet the person next to you and shake their hands like it's going to shake off and tell them the pastor says cancel your guilt trip mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cancel your guilt trip cancel your guilt trip cancel your guilt trip hallelujah amen amen you may be seated in the house praise god cancel your great trip cancel your guilt trip Anybody here ever been on a guilt trip? <laughs> you, 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 know, you know your New Year resolutions you made. To start eating only cottage cheese and fresh fruits. You did so fine up until the end of January. And, and then you fell off the wagon. <laughs> Uh, now, 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 now you're reaching now you're reaching for that half you're reaching for the half gallon of ice cream all those times you've called in sick for work but you weren't really sick oh and your conscience oh, oh I, I wouldn't even get in your kool this morning but you know what that sense of guilt feels like. You promise you'll never blow the gasket on your kids again. You know how that went last Saturday. 
You swore to God you would never do that thing again. But you know who's knocking on the door of your heart. The giant of guilt. The story is told that Noel Coward, it's a name, a well known playwriter, as a prank, as a prank, he was playing prank, as a prank, he sent an identical anonymous letter to 10 notable men in London. And the letter he sent to them reads like this. Listen to it. We know what you have done. If you don't want to be exposed, leave town. <laughs> Within six months, all ten men that received the letter moved. They left town. It's a bad prank. But it shows you the incredible power of guilt. No, didn't even know what they did. It was just a prank. Guilt is a terrible burden, a terrible burden to bear, wouldn't you say? There are some listening to me this morning who have been slowly crushed, slowly suffocated by the giant of guilt. Guilt kills slowly. But oh, its pain is excruciating. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just think of Judas Iscariot hanging himself from a tree. Just how do you live with things in your past that you can't live down. Uh, I, I'm talking about those things the enemy of your soul keeps bringing up against you to terrorize you, to intimidate you, and to torment you. Oh, somebody know, somebody here, if, you, if you've lived long enough, if you live long enough, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't lived long enough, you won't have a clue what this preacher is talking about. But if you've been here long enough to see the change from black and white TV to color TV, <laughs> uh, to see the change from rabbit high, high uh, you remember, you all remember the rabbit high TV where you have to get up and fix the uh, rabbit ears, yeah, rabbit ears TV where you have to get up and, and fix the antenna. If you're here to see the change from rabbit ears TV to digital 500 channels, from 10 inch TV to 85 inch TV then you would know and you would understand what I'm saying that life would throw a wicked curved ball at you and it will sometimes leave you living with stuff that you'd later regret does anyone in here know what this preacher is talking about or you want me to play Noah Coward's prank on you? There's no one here, young or old, who hasn't made some mistakes along the way. What could have been? What should have been? What would have been? And you've got to be able to live with your could have, should have, would have family. Because you, you can't go back as you've been singing this morning. Your past is over. But you can shake off yourself and shake off the dust of the past. And in spite of what has happened, you can still walk in victory. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here this morning? In our text this morning, David, our man. David, our hero. David, the man after God's own heart. Needed to confront yet another giant in his life. The giant of guilt. I won't bore you with the story of David and Bathsheba and Uriah. 
uh, it, 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 we're reading that story yes last sunday and this sunday and it feels like we're watching a soap opera except this one is in the bible isn't it interesting to know that the bible never flatters its heroes when it tells the story of the heroes in the past in the pages of this book it tells it as it is no fluffing it doesn't deny or paint over the dark side no 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 cover-ups that ought to tell you the authenticity authenticity of this book he says it as it is you and i would probably say oh let's keep it family secret you, you all know this family secret don't you no fluffing with that said we find ourselves today reading about a sin which has received probably more press than any other sin in human history more press than any other scandal in the white house i did not have with that woman you remember except the sin of adam and eve this one of david we're about to see received no 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 other no other scandal received more more press than this press so you all know the story of david and Bathsheba very well she was taking a bath outside and and you know Bathsheba was the wife of uriah one of david's men and while she was taking birth, bath when she was taking a bath outside david the king was playing the peeping tom he could have stopped by just what he saw but the bible says he went further and inquired last week he saw and he inquired then he slept with her and then he heard those words that bad boys don't like to hear i'm pregnant <laughs> the bun is in the oven now give king david a credit will you he didn't run out of town he didn't run out of town like most bad boys would he stayed in town and had uriah but chiba's husband come back home from afghanistan or wherever they were fighting back then he had him come home so he would set him up to try to make it look like she was pregnant by uriah you know the story and uriah came home by the order of the commander in chief and and king david gave uriah some bottles of jack daniels to jack him up <laughs> hoping he will get drunk and Uriah would go home and go sleep with his wife. Sound like a soap opera, doesn't it? Sound like a soap opera. That was David's alibi for the pregnancy. It's smart, but it's wrong. Because the God we serve would even let smart plans go wrong. To show us that he is still in charge. He is still in control. Hello, somebody. When that plan failed, when that plan failed, David plotted another one. This time he sent Uriah on a death row, on a death row. Placed him in the front line of the battle where Uriah got killed. With Uriah dead. And out of the way. But Sheba can now move in with David. Perfect plan! Right? Almost. <laughs> oh, 
thank you Jesus except 2nd Samuel chapter 11 verse 27 The story, the dust settles in. Man did what man did. And then God spoke. See, God will let you do what you do. And God will let you speak what you speak. And then verse 27 will show up. Except in verse 27 says, but the thing but the thing, the thing that David had done was evil in the sight of the Lord. Another translation says, the thing David had done, NIV, displeased the Lord. Good Lord. Meaning, David, what are you thinking? Covering up your sin and you think nobody's looking. How can you forget that there's one who is always looking? God. The omniscient one you wrote about yourself, David, in Psalm 139, verses 7 and 10. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heavens, verse 8, thou art there. If I take and, and, and flee into Sheol, verse 8, thou art there. Behold, thou art there too. If I take the wings of the dawn and fly away. If I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there thy hand will lead me and thy right hand will find me out. Come on, David, what are you thinking? You forgot that there's one who is always watching. Even if no man sees. The text says, and the thing that David did was evil in the sight of God. The sight. He sees it all, somebody. You can't play God. You can't fool, you can fool the pastor. You can't fool God. But, 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 but don't forget, don't forget, David was still a man after God's own heart. So while no other human, while no other human but Bathsheba knew some, some of what had happened, she at least knew David got her pregnant. Ladies, I, I know, I know sometimes the men, we men, we think you ladies are weak and stupid or something. Because <laughs> we're always trying to pull one over you. But you're not stupid. A woman, a woman knows who got her pregnant. Right, ladies? <laughs> oh, come on now, help me out here. Some, some of you are thinking. I'm not sure. Oh, no, no, please. Come on, help me out here. <laughs> some, of, some sisters here. Come on, come on, get with the message. Get with the message. So, so Bathsheba, Bathsheba knew one thing right. Bathsheba knew one thing right. David did it. But she may not have known, she may not have known that David had sent her husband to the firing squad. She knew something, but she didn't know the whole story. But there's one human being, apart from God, who knew the whole story. And he had to live with this giant of guilt 
tormenting him day and night for almost a year. How long does it take a woman to be pregnant? Nine months, right? Okay. So, so, so if you understand and you read the chronology of this, this text, the baby was already almost born before God sent Nathan to go confront David. So for a year, for a year, David was living in torment. Uh, remember, he was still a man after God's heart? So, so, so his conscience must have been bothering him. Otherwise, he was no man of God. You can't say you're a man or a woman of God and not have no conscience. <laughs> no, somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. L -l Let me stop. Let me stop and teach you what guilt is and what guilt is not. Uh, uh, it's very important you understand the difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow. Uh, uh, there they, they, they are things that you need to feel guilty for. And there are things that you need not feel guilty for. So, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help you out here to understand the difference between what guilt is and what guilt is not. Here it is. What guilt is not. Worldly sorrow. True biblical guilt is not worldly sorrow. <laughs> worldly sorrow is like the guy who felt bad that he had cheated on his income tax. So, so he wrote Revenue Canada and said, I'm sorry I cheated on my income tax and, and I can't sleep at night knowing that I've cheated you. So, so I'm enclosing a check for $150 and if I still can't sleep, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's worldly sorrow. That's worldly guilt. Worldly sorrow, worldly sorrow, according to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says, I'm sorry because I got caught. Let me show you what guilt is. Biblical guilt. But true, authentic biblical guilt is a godly sorrow. A godly sorrow that says, now that God has helped me see my sins, I must do something about them so I don't fall in the same pit again. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 17, uh, chapter 7 verse, uh, chapter 7 verse, uh, verse 10, Godly sorrow would always lead you to repentance. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Godly sorrow would always lead you to repentance. It produces a repentance. Without what? Without what, church? Without regret. True biblical guilt, when you've confessed it, you won't regret it. It, it, it also leads to something else. Leading to what? Salvation. Everybody say salvation. salvation. Who am I preaching to in this place this morning? Because God promised me, if I preach this message to you authentically and realistically and biblically, God promised somebody is going to be set free here today. Oh, oh yes, yeah, somebody is going to be... Somebody is about to cancel your guilt trip. You bought a ticket for... This morning, in Jesus' name. If I'm talking to you, go ahead and give the Lord your victory praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Where the spirit of the Lord is, have you been singing this freedom? Church, for a whole year, a whole year, 12 months, 365 days, David had to live with this burden of guilt. What do you do when you are at the top of your game? You finally reached it. You finally got there. And in the moment of unrestrained passion,
passion, you fall. And now you have to live with what you can't live down. What do you do? I'll tell you what I do. Somebody look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, I'm canceling my guilt trip. Uh, hallelujah. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm canceling my guilt trip because the Bible tells me he whom the son has set free is Aren't you glad you serve a merciful God? The God of second chance? Watch what is going on here. This is so good. You, you have to read it in the context. Watch what is going on here. Watch what is going on here. Why I say you serve a God who is a merciful God. The Lord was about to send his prophet Nathan to help David to cancel his guilt trip. For a whole year, he's been living in silence, in guilt. And God knew that this man was still a man after his own heart. He said, I'm going to go help David. And how he's going to help David to cancel his guilt trip was by sending his prophet. So he sent the pastor to, to David to confront David. Confront. Well, I, I, I don't even want to use that word confront. I like to call it carefrontation. Carefrontation. Because some of us, we think we have the gift of confrontation. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. No, no. If you want to tell me as your pastor, if I've done wrong, there's a biblical way that you do it. He said, do not rebuke an elder harshly. The Bible said, do not touch my anointed. Oh! Do not touch my anointed. David couldn't even touch Saul. Even though the spirit had left Saul. David couldn't touch Saul. For all the wrong that Saul did to him, he couldn't even touch him. He said, how can I touch the anointed of God? If you want to confront a man of God, I'll, I'll tell him who is the boss. No, 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 no. Instead of confront, care front. I like care front, care frontation. If I do something wrong and you know it and you come to me because you love me and you come to me in the spirit of grace, I'm going to embrace you and say, please forgive me. I know I have done wrong. But you say, I'm going to show him. I'll tell you where to go. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. You are not hearing me this morning. David was about to, to be confronted by the man of God. And he couldn't even speak to him and say right away, you're the man. He had to tell him a parable to make David feel it. You, you think he was wasting time? He, he, he had to come gentle. So he doesn't break the vessel. And then when he needed to say, you're the man. He still said it. But David said, you're right. I've sinned. David could have chopped his head off as the king. Said, Who are you to talk to me? He's the king. But he came to give him the carefrontation in a graceful way. And there's nothing like grace. Hey, I said there's nothing like grace, church. He came to confront him, to confront him about his sin of murdering Uriah. It was a grievous sin, church. And the sin of committing adultery against Bathsheba. It was a nasty, wicked sin, church. This, the Bible said, and this thing David did was evil in his sight. But God knew he had to help him cancel this guilt trip. So he sent his men. For the remainder of our time, let me quickly share with you the three ways three ways that David took to cancel his guilt trip. And these three ways will help you cancel yours too. I know somebody came here burdened with guilt. 
and this message is for you this morning three ways are you ready to receive anybody here ready to receive yes. number one face it simple face it when prophet nathan told david you are the man david had to face it there was no more cover-ups oh. You remember what David said later on in Psalm 32, verse 3? Psalm 32, verse 3, give it to me. When he revealed to us what the, the giant of guilt was doing to him on, the, on his inside for a year, a whole year. David says, when I kept silent, when I kept silent for that one year, my, my bones wasted, wasted through my groaning all day. Anybody here experience the power of guilt? Why you feel rotten? If you don't feel rotten, go check yourself out. <laughs> you killed your conscience. <laughs> it it reminds one of my favorite stories. Uh, I'm going to tell it. Uh, remember, remember the duck. Uh, this little boy was visiting his grandma's house, and while playing with his sling, with his slingshot. He could never hit his target. This guy could, was, he, he just misses, he misses like 100 miles. He couldn't hit anything. And one day he was playing, his, uh, playing in his grandma's backyard uh, with his slingshot, and he spotted his grandma's dog. He spotted his grandma's pet dog. On impulse, he took a him at that dog and let the rock fly. And the stone hit grandma's dog. And the dog fell dead. The boy panicked. And, and in a moment of panic, he, 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 he quickly hid the bird in the wood pile in the backyard, only to look up and, and see that his big sister Sally was watching it all. <laughs> after lunch, after lunch, grandma told Sally, Sally, I, I want you to go help wash dishes now. And Sally, 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 Sally responded. Oh, oh, Grandma, Johnny said, Johnny said he wanted to do the dishes. <laughs> Didn't you, Johnny? And she whispered in Johnny's ears, remember the dog. <laughs> so Johnny had to do the dishes for the next few weeks. Johnny's dishes... And Sally's dishes. Johnny was stocked with all the chores in the house, including his chores and Sally's chores. And each time Johnny wanted to protest, he would whisper in his ears, Remember the dog. <laughs> Remember the dog. One day, Grandpa. One day, Grandpa wanted to take the boys, uh, take, take, take the children out fishing in the evening. And uh, so he said, All right, kids, uh, we would like to go fishing with me. And, and Sally and Johnny, of course, said, yes, they would like to go. And, 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 and Grandma quickly protested. So no, 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 no. Sally, you're not going anywhere. I need you to help me prepare the dinner tonight. And Sally looked at Johnny and said, Grandma, oh, it's all taken care of. Johnny said he would like to help get the dinner ready. And then he was going to protest. Remember, Remember the dog. <laughs> finally, finally, Johnny couldn't take it anymore. He couldn't stand it anymore, so he looked past Sally and, and just went toward his grandma and said, Grandma, I have a confession to make. I killed the duck. I know Johnny. She said, moving toward Johnny to give him a hug. I was standing there at the kitchen window and I saw the whole thing. Because I love you. I forgive you. But I was wondering how long you will let Sally make a slave out of you. 
Oh, somebody, somebody here, you, you can let the giant of guilt, you can let the giant of guilt make a slave of you. Or you can realize, like David, that God knows all about it. He knows all about it already. And instead of still covering up the dark under the wood pile, you can face it and own up to it so he can forgive you and you can cancel your guilt trip. Because the Bible says to tell you again and remind you in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins are scarlet, they'll be as white as what? Oh, church. Though they be red like crimson, they will be like wool. So, so aren't you thankful for cavalry? Aren't you glad that there's a fountain? There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners like David and sinners like you and sinners like me can plunge beneath that flood and lose all our what? Oh, somebody's not hearing the word of the Lord to you this morning. You can't let the giant of guilt make a slave of you anymore. Thank him for the cleansing. Thank him for the cross. Thank him for his nail pierced hands. David could no longer cover up his sins. There's no mistake. There's no mistake who takes the rap here. When you read Psalm 51, verse 1 and 2, which is the record, the record of how David, see Psalm 51 and Psalm 32, a record of David's psalm after the sin with Bathsheba. If you read those two psalms, especially verse uh, chapter 51 of Psalm 51 and verse 1 and 2, which is the record of, 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 of what happened, what took place after Nathan confronted him, confronted him, listen to what David says. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. You, you notice all the me, my, me, my, me, more, more, me. Do you notice all the me, my there? It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need. Oh. It's me, oh Lord, not the deacon. <laughs> not Mrs. Dredge Dust. <laughs> it's me, oh Lord. There's no doubt. There's no doubt who is owning up to what has happened here. Isn't that refreshing? David could have blamed his genes. You know, I was born that way. He could have said, I am what I am because of my mama. If she was a good mother, I wouldn't be messed up. Grow up! She was a good mama for something. At least she gave birth to you. Do you know how many mamas have bought their babies every day, every minute, every year? At least she did one thing right. She gave birth to you. How come you're sending your mama on a guilt trip? Hey, what goes around? What goes around? When are you going to quit blaming other people? How you were raised and the neighborhood you were raised. And when are you going to start owning up? Oh, oh somebody's about to be delivered here this morning. Be but, but you have to realize, like David, that the first step you have to take in counseling your guilt trip is you have to face it. You can't keep on pretending you're okay when you're not okay. 
Oh, I know you're all here this morning in your Sunday best and you're looking good and, and you're, 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 you're talking to church talk to your friends this morning before the service in the foyer. I can hear you. Oh, how are you doing, Sister Caroline? Ooh, I'm, 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 praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I, I'm walking with, I'm moving on with the Lord. Hallelujah. He, he's good. And they are jealous of you? And they are jealous of you? But, 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 but if only they know what's beneath all that lace and silk, the shame and guilt you're covering up. Like the drunk, the drunk guy, the, this drunk guy will, will snuck up the stairs quietly in the middle of the night. He, he didn't want to wake up his wife and, and he had been in a fight. He had been in a fight early that night. He was in a, a drunken brawl. And, and as he looked in the bathroom mirror, he could see the cuts and the bruises on his face for his foolish actions. So, so he's drunk. Don't forget he's drunk. So he quickly cleaned up himself so his wife wouldn't know what had happened. And, and he, he thought he had managed to pull another one over his wife's. Again, right? When morning came, he opened his eyes. And there on top of the bed was an angry looking wife. She said to me, she said to him, you were drunk again last night, weren't you? And the guy replied, oh, no, 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 honey, I wasn't drunk. And she responded, well, if you weren't drunk, who put all the band-aid plasters on the bathroom mirror? <laughs> come, come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. So, so some of you will get that later on. <laughs> some of you will get that later on. You may think, you may think your sin is hidden. You may think your sin is hidden. But Numbers, Numbers chapter 32 verse 23 says to tell you, be sure your sin will find you. Hello somebody. David found out the truth of Numbers chapter 32 verse 23 quickly. And somebody here, you can't have secret things pulling you back anymore. If you want to move forward as you were singing this morning, if you're going to go to that next level of living, you got to be free and loose and untangled. Oh, I need, I need few, few of you to help me preach this message across this morning. Tell your neighbor one more time, I'm canceling my guilt trip. You, you can't have cover-ups. You can't let cover-ups pull you down and weigh your mind down, send, stealing your joy, guilt making you eat too much, uh, cover-ups making you have hypertension and, and giving you stroke and giving you cardiac arrest. If you don't know it, if you don't know it, medical research, medical research now says and shows that guilt, guilt, guilt causes a lot of disease. But somebody here, this morning before this over you're gonna shake it all off because <laughs> because this is still your year of new beginnings you you can't let your past keep you holding down god says to tell you in this word that he is making all things new in jesus name somebody say yes lord <laughs> so david faced it he faced it I'm moving on. But look what else stands out in our text. Verse 13. Look what else stands out in our text in verse 13 of 2 Samuel chapter 12. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. That's the second way he took to cancel his guilt trip. Which is number two. Face it. First step is face it. And after you're able to face it, you'll be able to face it. Oh, this is good Holy Ghost inspired message. David confessed, I have sinned. We don't call sin sin anymore, do we? Even in the church. We call sin any other thing but sin we, we, we call sin my bad <laughs> oops <laughs> mistake 
<laughs> one guy, I heard this, one guy on Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil's show, one guy came on Dr. Phil's show and said, he's had 50 affairs, 50 affairs in five years. 50 affairs in five years. And he referred to them all mistakes. <laughs> Honey, do you know what a mistake is? A mistake is when kids in the Sunday school miss the drama lines. That's a mistake when they miss their lines in their play. You don't call messing up people's life a mistake. But confession is to say about your sin what God says about it. Confession is repeating what God says. Oh, this is good teaching. Watch this. Watch this. God sent Nathan to David to tell him his sin. David could have pleaded temporary insanity. He could have even blamed Bathsheba for bathing in the public where people in town like him can see. Most people today, most people today, come on, let me be realistic with you. Most people today will certainly have blamed Bathsheba for bathing in the public. They would have called her the desperate housewife of Jerusalem. <laughs> the seductress. Wouldn't you say? But no. David knew he was he knew if he was doing what he should have been doing where he should have been doing it then it happened wouldn't have happened who is this message happening this morning no denial is made he didn't say the devil made me do it no 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 excuses are given David says back to Nathan what God says about him I have sinned against the Lord. That's what it means to face it. Because you can't be forgiven. You can't cancel your guilt trip unless you confess it. Oh, I I'm preaching an old-fashioned gospel message this morning that is still setting the captives free. Hello, somebody. We, we don't talk about sin anymore, right? A, a Sunday school teacher had just finished uh, teaching our children uh, uh, an important lesson. And she wanted to make sure that they, they really got that lesson and she was able to put a point across very well. So she asked the kids, she asked, she asked a student, can anyone tell me what you must do before you can obtain forgiveness of sins? Can anyone tell me what you must do before you're forgiven? And the class was all quiet. The kids were thinking about the, the answer to the questions. I want you to think about the answer to the question. Think too. Think about it. What must you do in order to be forgiven of your sins? Think about it. I know one of, some of you right now, you're thinking confession, right? Right? Or oh, some of you are not co thinking confession. Okay, good. So you're smart if you're not thinking confession. So the class were quiet. And then one boy just raised up his hand and said, I know the answer. The answer is sin. That's the answer. Sin. You have to sin in order to be forgiven. See, some of you went, oh, my wife said, oh, I wasn't thinking of sin. <laughs> that was the right theological and yet simple answer to that question. You cannot be forgiven unless you have sinned. Simple. You don't need forgiveness if you haven't sinned. <laughs> Smart boy, wouldn't you say? You see, see, and where you get your guilty stain removed and where you get your guilt trip cancelled is when you confess your sin. As First John chapter 1 verse 9 says that God is faithful and righteous to forgive us our what? Not, not our boo boo, not our my bad, not our mistake, but all our what sins, and to cleanse us from. 
Some? Most? Come on, somebody. What John is saying here is this. Give me the lifeline. Never underestimate God's capacity to forgive. All, not some, not most, all never underestimate God's capacity to forgive because there's power in the blood. Who here is being set free this morning? Identify yourself. Because that's why, that's why you need, that's why you need to take this third and final step in order to cancel your guilt trip and then I'm gone. Number three. Number three. This is good. Forgive it. Oh. First, you face it. And then after you face it, you're able to face it. And then, then and only then, forgive it. No, 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 no. I know what you're thinking. I'm not talking about the Lord forgiving you here. It's already, he's already forgiving you when you face it and when you face it, David. But I'm talking about you forgiving you. Oh, somebody missed that. <laughs> this is good. This is good. This is good. A psychiatric doctor once said this. If he could convince the patients in his hospital that their sins are forgiven, 75% of them could walk out of that hospital. Like that. Isn't that something? See how debilitating the giant of guilt can make people be. But somebody here, I came to tell you this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle you're facing with a giant of guilt. And you can't let it weigh you down anymore. You, you, you've had one year of bad season, David. But the season is over. I say your season of shame and guilt is over in Jesus' name. I came here this morning to call you out of your depression. I, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I came here to call you out of your Lord bar. I came to free you. Because the Bible says, as far as the east is from the west. Oh, I'm talking the word of God this morning in your life. So the Lord has removed. And the reason, see, a lot of people are depressed. I see this. I'm a pastor. I, 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 I did clinical psychology. A lot of people are depressed. A lot of people are guilty. They can't sing the Lord's song. They can't dance because they have this spirit of heaviness. It's a foul spirit. It's a demonic spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Oh, you're not hearing me. Am I saying you won't sin? You will sin. Am I saying you should continue in sin? Far from it. That grace should abound. You are a man after God's own heart. And once you sin, you confess it. And you face it. And you forgive it then you're free you don't go i'm a worm i'm a worm of the earth no the reason you can forgive yourself is because he has forgiven you and the reason you can accept yourself is because you are accepted in the beloved Oh, I, I, better, I better quit this message before I get myself carried away in this place. I can't tell you how many Christians I know, even Christians, who are living under this burden that they, that they, don't, they don't even believe that God can forgive them. And if they don't believe that God can forgive them, certainly they can't forgive themselves. Do you know? I wish I had time. You, you remember when we were in Joseph, doing the life of Joseph? And Joseph, with everything that his brothers did to him, he forgave them all. And in the end, in Genesis chapter 50, we read it. When, David's, when Joseph's father died, the brother said, 
Maybe now that our father is dead, Joseph will revenge. They've been forgiven, but they couldn't forgive themselves. And the Bible said Joseph wept. Joseph in the Bible is a picture of Christ. Somebody here you've been forgiven. And you still can't forgive yourself. When you can't forgive yourself, Jesus is weeping. And you may not know this. But when you can't forgive yourself, what you're saying to, to God, the Christian brother, what you're saying to God, Christian sister, is you're saying to God, I doubt if you've truly forgiven me. Your saying is blood is not enough. Forgive it. I'm done. This is, this, is, this is a good moment. I, I don't want to ruin this moment because I feel the Spirit of God moving in this place. It's a gentle spirit. It doesn't give us a spirit of heaviness. There's a, a gentle spirit here this morning. I'm going to ask you all to stand up on your feet. As the worship team is leading us in this, next, in this closing song, I know somebody here is, somebody is here this morning. You haven't done what David did. No, you haven't done what David did. But you, you've done something that you can't live down. I'm going to invite you to come to this altar. I'm going to pray with you and together we're going to cancel that guilt trip we're going to cancel that ticket you bought to the city of regret today today welcome back and i hope the message this morning was a blessing to you yes we've talked about it you can cancel your guilt trip yes you bought that ticket but you need not, you need not, if you face it, you face it, and you forgive it. The Bible surely promised that God would forgive you. And you don't have to live in the city of regret anymore. Trust this message has been a blessing to you. I'd like to pray with you right now. And the prayer that I want to pray with you is that prayer of deliverance, that you'll be set free. The Bible said, him whom the Son has set free, is free indeed. Pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. Would you come and set me free this morning? I confess my sin. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. And I receive you by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says if you do that, you've been born again. You've now come from death unto life. Join us next week at the same time for more WHBC TV. See you again. God bless.